This week on Archery 101, we're going to talk about indoor target archery. Hey everybody, welcome to Archery 101, Greg here. All right, indoor archery. 3D season's usually over in the winter, what are you gonna do? Well, indoor archery, it's always an option. Today we're gonna talk about a 300 round. Now, there's multiple types of 300 rounds, but primarily here in the US there's two types, the NFAA, the National Field Archery Association, and the World Archery, otherwise known as a Vegas round here in the United States. All right, what we're gonna to cover today is the NFAA indoor 300 round. Now they believe it was first held in 1977 and it is one of the big events here in the United States with the US Nationals. So our goals for today's video is pretty simple. One, I want to give you a basic understanding of what an NFAA 300 round is. I want you to understand how it's run, some things you can expect, and I'll try to give you some tips along the way. A 300 round is an indoor archery competition. Duh, that's what we said earlier, right? All right, the name 300 is derived from the maximum points an archer can get in one of the rounds. Now, besides the NFAA, there are 300 competitions held by local clubs, regional associations, and others. You know, while they follow the same general format, they can have differences. I cannot stress enough to you the need for you to do your research of the rules for whatever organization that's running the event that you plan on going to. Don't be called off guard, because you will, and you'll pay the price for it. All right, first, let's quickly look at how things are broken down. All right, archers themselves are broken down by styles and divisions. And the divisions are first gender, male and female. All right, and then they go by age. And you have two basic breakdowns, and they're broken down each even more. It's adult and junior. Male, female, adult, junior. For the juniors, a young adult is anybody 15 to 17 years old. A youth is anybody that is 12 to 14 years old. And cubs are 12 and under. For the adults, it's ages 17 to 54, right? And seniors are 55 to 64. And master seniors are 65 and above. One thing to note about those two, last two, the seniors and master seniors, is that adults in the senior and master senior division can compete in the adult division if they so desire, but they cannot compete in two at the same time. All right now we're talking about styles, you know, and styles is broken down by equipment. And this is too detailed to cover, so please, please check the rules. Now some, but not all, will also break you down by experience. And this is another one that you gotta check the rules on because they, everybody does it slightly different. Pro, amateur, novice, blah, blah, blah. All right? All right, boys and girls, there you have it. You know, like with any of these, how much of a breakdown there is depends on who's running the event. Most local events only break it down by equipment, gender, and that's about it. So again, check the rules before you go. All right, everybody, to understand how a 300 is organized, you're going to need to know three terms. End, game, and round. So we'll start with an end. The end. Hey! End is, the, is what the whole event is devised around. It's all built around the end. That is the basic operating unit, if you want to call it that, of a 300 round. Right? An end will last four minutes. In that four minutes, the archers must shoot five arrows at from 20 yards. There will be 12 ends. Scoring is also done by the end. The maximum points one can earn in an end is 25. All right, so that's the end. The next one is a game. Now the game is just a way to break up scoring and plays no real part in the event. And some places don't even do games, other places do. So what's a game? Well, four ends makes a game, right? And the maximum points in a game is 100. So you can see it's just something to break it up. It's not a real part of the tournament. I've been to some that have it. I've been to others that don't. So if you see your scorecard with the three blocks of four, then you know you're doing three games, right? Which leads me to the final one, 
the round. The round is what the entire event is called. Three games makes a round. The maximum points is 300 points. So it goes like this pretty much. So let's summarize it real quick, right? A 300 round is an indoor archery event in which the archers are broken down into divisions based on gender, age, and equipment. The archers will shoot five arrows at a target from 20 yards. The archers will do this 12 times for a total of 60 arrows. The maximum points they can earn is 300, right? That is as simple as I can make it for you. That's what a 300 round is. You're going to shoot five arrows 12 times. The maximum points are 300. All right now that we know what one is, next we're going to go to the range and show you how one is run. Okay, everybody, here we are. I'm at my local archery club. They do run two events, so what I'm going to base it on is how we do it here. Now, every club's going to be slightly different. Keep that in mind, but it's going to give you a good basic understanding. So first thing you got to do if you're going to compete is you got to register. Right? Actually, you got to find out about the event, right? And then you register. Now, some local events, it's pretty much all done on site. Um, some regional and larger ones, you can do it online. So once you register, I'd highly adv advise you to look up and see what the rules are. Now there's one thing about when you go to these events, which I found out. As you can see today, I'm wearing sweatshirt, blue jeans. I was told this was inappropriate dressing. All right? My blue jeans, which have no holes in them, are nice and clean, are not proper attire. But what blew my mind was the two teenagers shooting with me who had those long ass shorts that go past the knees with big fancy print patterns on them made out of polyester and wearing a t-shirt looking like slobs that was okay to the dress code so had to let it go I apologize for dressing inappropriately and they let me shoot some clubs won't because if somebody complains you can actually be knocked out of the event all right it's just a little word on dress codes just they say khaki pants but big you know big old long Homeboys in the hood, shorts are fine, but not blue jeans. But I digress. All right, so once we're here, you register. Like here, they'll have a guy here. You're going to probably have to fill out a waiver, sign some paperwork, divisions, and all that. You're going to have to pay. Most places charge you about 20 bucks. Then what you're going to get, the guy looks at your card or your paperwork, and he's going to give you a division assignment. Now, here's the deal. Some people, you fill out the cards, or they fill out the cards. And we're going to get to that in a minute, but we're just going to cover some other stuff. So what they'll either do is they'll give you your target here, or it'll be out on the range. Now, in an NFAA 300, you have a choice of two targets. The first one is this. It's called a single spot. This is technically not the right color. It's supposed to be more of a gray, but this is one that I have. All right. This is called a 40 centimeter single spot target. The X is 4 centimeters. The five ring is five centimeters. Now, the X is also scored as a five, right? And it can be used to determine who wins in a tiebreaker. However, according to the rules, the tiebreaking method will be determined at the discretion of the tournament director. So, something you might want to ask about. So, back to our target. Four ring, that's 16 centimeters. Three rings, 24. Five ring is 32, and the one ring is 40 centimeters left to right. It's usually made on a heavyweight paper, right? And that's what, if you're new, I don't care what you shoot, I'd highly suggest this. When you get good, you get a tendency of punching this out and make it harder to score. Your other option is what they call a five spot or a five circle, right? The whites are five, the blues are fours. That's how they do it, right? Now, one last thing on targets, right? Um, it's totally up to the tournament director's discretion in which targets to use. They can use these, but they can also use the multicolored 40 centimeter Vegas shoot targets for 300. And if they do that, you're only going to shoot three arrows at a time for 10 times. So now you can see this stuff just gets ridiculously complicated. So just think about it, you're going to come, register, fill out your paperwork, pay, and get your target. All right? And then you either choice of five spot or one spot. We'll keep it like that. 
Now the next thing you're going to have, and that depends on the event now, right? And that's your scorecard. Now, you may get one scorecard, or you might get two scorecards, right? On the, each place is a little different. Most of them will have your name, the date, whatever division you're competing in, right? Now it's important to look at your scorecard, right? And you're saying, well, why? I mean, really look at it. And the reason it's important is because, remember when I was talking about the five arrows in four minutes done 12 times, right? Four, eight, 12, got that, right? Well, besides using a different target face, the tournament director can dictate that it's four arrows done in three minutes, 15 times. So if you look at your scorecard, you're gonna know if you see three groups of four, that that's a four minute. But if you see the other one, you know it's gonna be a three minute time period. So take a good look at it, and it'll also help you to understand about how they score, right? You're gonna have how they score X's, and some places even do a running total over here, so you get your regular total and then a running total. So take a good look at your scorecard. Don't just blow it off, write your name on it. Okay, let me go out there. Take a good look at it, and it'll give you a lot of vital information about your shoot. All right, we registered in. I got my bow, got my targets, target, got my cards, I got my quiver, but where do I go? Right, what do I do now? All right, next thing I do is select a lane, right? And I'll tell you this real quick. The earlier you get there, the better the selections. If you get there late and it's already filled up, you don't get a select. And if you don't like shooting low, which we'll cover in a minute, it's really going to hurt you. The other thing you got to check on is bow racks. Do they have them? Where they are? Become familiar with them so you know where to put your bow. What about a quiver? Should I wear a back quiver? What about a hip quiver? What's the advantage or disadvantages? Talk about that. But if you're looking for a quiver, one thing you want to see if they have is these arrow holders. This will make your life a lot less complicated, all right? So what they have here at this place, they have bull racks on the side of the wall. They also have them back here, and I'll turn around the camera and show it to you. All right, everybody, here's their main bow racks right here. And this is not bad because the shooters are here and the bows are here. So you can take your bow, put it off the side, and you go out that door. They also have them down here in the wall. These are pretty nice because the guys with their compounds, and that's designed right for them. Their bows sit just like that. But as you can see, my trad bow won't do that, and they always fall over into other people's bows. So be mindful of that. The other one you can do, and forgive me for turning my back on you, is hang them up. Right? But the problem with hanging them up, what if somebody puts their bow in front of yours, you got to go get it, then you got to move people's bows. Little things, you know, little things for a competitive archer can throw you off. So get to know those now so you can take care of them later. Okay, selected your lane, put your bow away, put your arrows off the side. Right, you know if you got an arrow holder or not. Now you got to come down and put targets. Now, for an actual event, they'll have really brand new cardboard. They always replace them before an event. But they're having a league here, so they're not going to replace them until they're shot out like that one you can see down there, the one behind me. Some places also have mesh on it. And that's another thing to know, because that mesh, if your arrow points stick out past the shaft, will get stuck in it. Something for you to reminder, remember about. So I got my target. Now how do you secure it on there? Everybody does different ways. Some do pins, some does tape. So you got a choice if you get here early enough. This is what they call a single target butt. Four targets go on it. Two uppers and two lowers. All right? So get your stuff out there, put it on there, right? And then the next point is you're gonna meet the people you're shooting with. So let's put my target on my butt. I like to put mine about an inch low. I'm gonna shoot next to this. That's another thing for you to remember. If you're shooting here, either side, you got that. You know, if you're one of those people that throws that errant arrow. You know, you got to pay attention to that. All right. Arr. Try to get your, doesn't matter which way it goes, it is a circle, right? There you go, got my assigned location. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna meet the people around you, right? You're gonna find the other people in your four butt, introduce yourself, this is important. Why? 
Well, what they do is they break it down in groups, and most places do scoring by butts. Now, it all depends on the turnout. If there's not enough people, they may combine butts. Now, this is where things, again, you get variances, right? Remember earlier I said about the two cards? Well, some events require sets of scores, and this is done to help prevent cheating, you know, from people like that. So, it's real simple. They break you down in four different things. Everybody has a different job. The first person on your group, and you decide this amongst yourself, is the score caller. He'll actually call the scores out. He'll make the decision on them. He'll say what the scores are. The next one or two people is the score keepers. Right? They'll write it down. That's why they have the two so they can compare them. The fourth person is called the team captain. Now, the team captain, according to the rules, shall be the judge of any disputed arrows on the target. Now, when the captain's arrows are in question, the majority of the group shall decide the status of the captain's arrows. Now, if someone appeals it and they appeal the captain's decision, then you bring in a line judge or an official who's appointed by the tournament director, and they'll make the call. All right? And that's it. Now you've got your target set up, you're registered, you've got your bow where it needs to be, you got your arrows where it needs to be, you got your target up. It's time to shoot, right? Not so fast. What most events do next is they have a safety briefing. Everybody gets together, the tournament director or the you know, designated person is going to come out and explain all the rules, generally speaking, that specific shoot for you. Listen to them closely. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Remember, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Just stupid people that ask questions. All right. So once you got your safety briefing done, they're going to tell who's going to go first. Right. And this all depends on, once again, how many people show up. This place has 22, sorry, 21 lanes, right? So one target on top, one tar target on the bottom. So 21 people shoot at a time, then the next 21 come out. So that's 42 archers at a turn. And what they do is they got a lot of people. They'll have some people shoot at 10 a.m. Like, or 1 a.m., things like that. So you got what they call lines, words get confusing. So you, that's something else you got to pay attention to. So you find out which one you're grouping, the first line or second line. Most places start with the lower ones first. All right, they're going to call you out, and then you get two practice ends. Ten arrows to figure out, especially if you're a gap shooter, where your point of your arrow needs to be. Right? Or if you're instinctive or whatever it is, get your form set down. That's it. you got ten arrows. That's it. Two sets. Right? And then, after that's done, they begin the competition. And I'm going to take you through it step by step and show you how that's done. All right, everybody. Time to go, right? Did all your registration, you put your target, you did everything, got your job assignment, everything's good to go. Practice time. Went through your safety briefing, you know what line, they call your line up. Grab your bow, grab your arrows. You got your arrow holder like I do, you put your arrows in the arrow holder. Now what you're going to see here behind me is two lines, right? And what that is, is an NFAA 300 is shot in 20 yards. That is the second line, the line closest to me. If you're doing the world archery, that's 18 meters. So you can see the difference, not even 12 inches. All right? So when you shoot, and I'll move back down here, when you shoot one of these ends, the rule state you must straddle the line. One foot in front, one foot behind. Pretty simple, right? All right, so no, next thing you know, let's talk about some things you need to know about. One, there is no rule about the exact size of a a range or even how much room there is between archers. The only line is safety. That's the primary concern. So here's some things you need to know about. And these are really big ones. So get out your pencil and paper. I'll wait because you're going to need to know this. All right, I can't wait anymore. First thing you need to know is on some of these shoots is how tight it is. I am telling you, there is no room. Now, if you're a trad archer, and you know how a lot of trad archers turn their bow flat, click the arrow in place, and set it down? That ain't going to work. I am covering two other lanes right now. You'll be hitting people. That's not going to work at all. What you're going to have to learn to do is if you're in your lane, keep your bow straight. What I do is I take the lower part of my bow and I put it on the inside of my leg to give me a little, a little support. Pull my arrow out of my holder. Take it, hold my two fingers on the knock, 
slide it down, pull back and click in place. I'm not in anybody's face, I'm not bothering anybody, but this is something you're gonna need to do and it's gonna throw you off if you're one of these guys, all right? Why am I mentioning this? Because in an indoor shoot, there's nothing but distractions galore and you gotta to learn to overcome these. This is the biggest thing you're gonna learn is the ability to overcome distractions, right? So, let's talk about it, right? First one, especially for you right-handed people, not for me, because I'm left-handed, I am born and used to this, is how close you are face to face. That's how bad it is. Now, I was at a shoot in Connecticut. I was here, the guy was there, he was an Olympic shooter, we're shooting an, um, an actual 450. And I mean, I could look in his teeth and tell you what he ate. We were close. This guy was so uncomfortable. What he was doing was let me shoot my three arrows, and then he'd come up and shoot, but it's throwing them off. And then he tried shooting with me. He, he even missed. He got so flustered, he quit. He left because he knew he had no chance to win. And guess who he blamed it on? Dang left-handed people, what you doing in my face? Dude, that's how it is. When you're a lefty, it's something to get used to. You're this close, and there's a guy here, guess what you can't do? You can't cant that bow. You're gonna be hitting people, all right? So you gotta keep the bow as vertical as you can. If there's nobody with you, you might be able to cant. And I'll show you that, the real good reason for that, right now. All right, everybody, this is about how close you are. If you're right-handed, it's not so bad, because that's the back of their head. But if you like to cant your bow, If you're even closer like that, you can't cant it. So, remember, look, how am I going to knock it? All right? How are you going to knock it? So, what do you, step back here off the line, knock, come back in. It's going to really throw you out of your rhythm. So, I'm not, I'm not telling you not to cant, but you got to be aware of the effects of canting your bow. All right? So, that's a big one. So, make sure you do that. Next thing we're talking about, walls. There are two people that's gonna have walls. One side's bad for you. For me, this is bad. For a righty, it's not so bad, because right-handed, you're back here. But again, right-handed, your can't's gonna affect you. The other side of the room, it's the opposite way. Shooting with walls can get in your head. You know, and Joe Turner's always talking about you gotta control your shot. Well, this is a big one. All right, let's go back to where we were, and I'll talk about the next one. All right, the next one's real simple, poles. You can see them running that side, and you can see them running this side. Now, a lot of places hold their, have their 3D ranges in the basement. So those poles are structural support, and they're not going to cut them out. You know, a lot of people, that's a distraction. Right? Just like trees out in the woods in 3D, that gets in your mind, and you got to pay attention to it. That black straight down there, I don't, oh, don't want to hit it. Dude, you're going to hit it if you think about it, right? So make sure you know about them. Get used to shooting with them. The next thing we got to talk about is the foul line. Now, according to the rules, if an arrow travels more than 10 feet from the shooting line, it's considered a shot and is scored a zero. Now, see if I can do this without making it look too bad. If you go, whoops, right? That's a shot. You just scored a zero. Now, if it doesn't go that far, let's say it just falls off and lands in the ground, don't pick it up because you're going to be putting your head in front of our other archers, remember safety, right? Shoot all your arrows, wait till they're done, reach down and pick it up, pick it up carefully. You know, safety rules, right? Okay, so there's the foul line, 10 feet. It's usually marked with tape, you know, or a piece of paint. Some people even put foul lines on it. All right, now what we're gonna talk about next is what to do when you are shooting. All right, everybody, a couple things you know, need to know about when you are shooting. One, being courteous, right? got to take the other archers into consideration. And the first one is try to refrain from talking. Sorry, it doesn't work for me. I, I make a little, I talk to myself a lot. You know, and that might bother the person next to you. You know, maybe they don't have the ability to block things out and they hear you talking, oh, no, blame it on you. Right? Like, I always say things like, you know, get in the game, Gregory. Oh, great shot, meathead. Come on, stupid. Things like that. Right? That can affect the person next to you. So try not to say it. And if you do hear it, 
got to learn to block it out. The next thing is moving out of the way. You shot all your arrows. Just don't back off and walk away because that person might be at full draw. They'll see the movement and they'll lose concentration. When you're done with your last arrow and there's people next to you shooting, just stand there quietly. Don't move. Wait until they're done shooting. One shot. Don't do it all of it. And then quietly back out of the way. Remember, you can't turn your bow sideways and walk out. So you keep your bow vertically. I turn mine down like this or down like that or up like this. And then you back out. Nice and quietly. Back out. Try not to make a distraction. Try not to make noise. Set your bow off to the side and you actually can stand back there. Or you can walk out of the room. That's your discretion. But remember, do it so it doesn't bother other people. All right, everybody, we got all the etiquette, you know, what you should do and all that, but when do you start shooting? Well, lights. Some places have timers. Now, if they have lights, they're supposed to have three lights. Green means it's good to go, time to shoot. Amber means it's one minute left in the end, and red tells you to stop shooting. All right, and they will change. They're on timers, and a lot of places they have a little buzzer for you. Now, I've been to some places that actually have display screens with a clock on it, which is really wild and very distracting. All right, everybody, got the green light. Time to shoot, right? No. We got a few more things to cover. First thing you know is on a five-spot target. Now, on a five-spot target, the rule state, you don't have to put one arrow in every target. You can put all the arrows in one target. It won't count against you. You can do one, tar one arrow, one arrow, one arrow, two arrows. Still counts. NFAA, don't know about the others. We're talking about it. Now, what happens, for whatever reason, you don't shoot all your arrows in your allotted time. What they do is if you don't shoot them, you get penalized. They go down there and they remove the highest scored arrow you have. So make sure you get all your arrows off in time. But what about equipment failure? Maybe you're drawn back and, you know, I had it happen last week. The string on my tab broke so it wouldn't stick to my hand. Well, the archer will be allotted 15 minutes repair time without holding up the tournament. So they're going to keep shooting while you go in the back and repair it. Once it's repaired, you get one practice end. Now, the archer will be allowed to shoot any arrows he or she did not shoot during the 15-minute repair time after the final end. All right? Pretty simple, right? All right. Now, now we get to shoot. But here's some things to remember. This is very important. The first one. It's not a race, all right? Trad archers, I'm telling you, I go to these events and they fire five arrows in less than a minute. And they're looking at everybody else. Take your time. Make sure you do it right. Four minutes is a long, long time. Pace yourself, right? You got a lot of arrows to shoot, 60 of them. You're gang, 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 gang. It's going to get you worked up, it's going to get your mind worked up, and it's not going to help you none. Pace yourself. The last thing I have to tell you is focus on what you need to do for the arrow that you're about to shoot. Not the arrow behind you that you just shot, or the one in the future. Stay in the here and now. Your mind has to be in the game. You're here shooting and you hear some doing, get a rejection. Draw down. Don't tell yourself, I can save this, I can block it out. No, you can't. Because if you heard it, your mind registered it, and you lost your focus. I cannot stress this enough, boys and girls. It is a trap I fall into all the time. All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot, talk a little bit, and I'll show you how we go down and score. All right, they called my line up, did all the stuff, it's time for me to shoot. Got to straddle the line. I always get my body to a certain place, lay my, air, my bow across my belly, and my bow limb should be pointing at the target. Now, this is my first practice round. It's not going to be good because I'm talking to you, so my mind's not in the game, but i got to break it down. My goal in my practice for me is to find where my arrow needs to be because I'm shooting gap, actually split vision, so I can get near the X. Another thing, I wear glasses now. That X, it's a blue blur. I know I should wear glasses, but where how I anchor and all that, it's just not working. So I got five arrows. I got four minutes to shoot five arrows. 
All right. Way low on the right. Show you that, but it's okay. We're gonna shoot this and I'm just gonna score it, so see how it goes. Shooting a little low. Remember, you gotta, so again, shoot an arrow. Don't just knock like I just did. Sit, look at it. Okay, well, I'm low, so I know where my point is. I gotta come a little higher. Right? Right next to the other one. So I still got to come even higher. Hmm. Oh man, am I getting a group low. That's okay. All right? Shows consistency, consistently low. All right, where I needed to go. So that took me, what, a minute or something, two minutes max. Um, when I get in a tournament, I really slow down, all right? So our next thing you're gonna do after you shoot your done, sh shoot your end, right? I gotta back out, put my bowl away, wait till everybody's done, We'll give the all clear, and then we walk down as our group, and we score. All right, buddy, here we are down to the target. First thing you need to know is you do not, do not touch your arrows until everybody's scored. Now, what happens if an arrow goes into the target because they got a bad bail? Well, the judges have to make the call for the points. If the judges cannot determine the score, then the archer's allowed to reshoot that arrow. Now, remember what we said earlier, if you question a call, the team captain decides the points. If you're not happy, you can call on a judge. They'll come in. I've seen them break out magnifying glasses, and they'll make the call. If you're still not happy, I guess you can appeal that. Check the rules. I don't know. All right, so let's say we walk up. I am the score caller. Um, some people start upper left, go right, figure it out, stay consistent, because it helps the scorekeepers because they'll have their cards in the proper order. So on this end, I like to go high points to low points. I'd walk up and say five, three, three, two, one. Scorekeepers would write it down. Then on this one here, they total it up. So that's uh, six, eight, nine, plus five is 14. Horrible end, but it's my practice. You know, and don't get yourself upset about the practice. This was cold shots, nothing, I didn't do anything, all right? So, yeah, excuse me, I almost choking myself to death. Now, once you're done, you may pull your arrows. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Make sure, some places make this mandatory, but others doesn't. When you pull your arrow, I'm going to move over here. Pull this arrow, which is a five. And I'm going to bring you in real quick to show you before we go on. I want to show you what I was talking about being on the line. Okay? Let's look at that five. The five is the perfect example of on the line. See that? That is a five, okay? Now if we go down, look at that one. See that bottom one on the right? That just barely clipped the line, but I got the higher value on it. All right, so let's move back out. Let's get you back out, and let me show you a trick about scoring. Sometimes when you're shooting, you're gonna have what's called a bounce out. The ear will actually hit and fall out. And the judges have to decide what score it is. To make it easier, pull your arrow out, mark it with a tick. Pull the arrow out, mark it with a tick. All right? Do that for all your arrows. Because this way here, if you have that bounce back, You'll be able to tell which one it is, because if you didn't do that, how are you going to know? All right? So, scoring's done. You're going to move back. Next line, if it's a big enough event, will come out and shoot, which means, here's a big one, 
you're going to have about a five minute break in between shooting ends. So if you're a rhythm shooter, <laughs> there's no rhythm gaining here. So make sure you know how many people there are, how many lines, so you can figure that out. You know, that big break, man, it hampers your rhythm. So we just shot, we scored, let the other people go. We're going to do that one more time. Then we start the scoring, right? And when we start scoring, that's when it really counts. All right, everybody, did our practice ends. Now you're going to shoot your first scoring end. You shot it, you're going to do that. Score it, come back. Now here's the big one. Not everybody does this, but some do. And man, this, this will crush instinctive archers. They'll do that for six ends. At the end of the six end, man, that doesn't even sound right. See my target? I'm going to move it down to the lower position, and the lower position moves it up to the upper position. So all that sight picture and everything you got, it's gone. If you're shooting gap and your point's not on the target, you got to find it over, and there's no practice rounds. That's why those guys that shoot string walking or gap, they, they got their arrow way up here, they're getting that arrow up on that target so it never changes. That's a big one. That's swapping in the target. Nothing crushes my score more than that right there. So and then you do six more ends. After that, it's all done. The two scorekeepers total it up. A lot of them have you sign it that you agree with their scores and they turn it in and the person in there, he'll compare them, write it down, tally it, and they'll figure out who won. That's basically how it's ran. So now we're gonna go back in the studio, wrap it all up, give you a few more little tips, and send you out to practice. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. All right, there you have it. All right, that's pretty much the process. Like I said, there's going to be variations from place to place. You know, but if you can go in knowing a little bit what to expect, it's going to make it much easier for you. Here's some things, important thing for you to remember. I hear so many people tell me these awesome practice scores. Then they get to a competition and their scores drop by about 20 points. It's normal for the difference between practice and competition of 10 to 20 point drop. So if you're thinking you're going to go in shooting a 250, no, you're going to probably shoot about a 220, 230, 240, somewhere in there. You're not, unless you've already done it, right? The first time I went in, <laughs> I was shooting good on a 3D course, right? And went in there, <laughs> oh man, was it horrible. It was a lousy experience. Right? And it's not because of the roundhouse design, it's because being accurate on a 3D course is very different than being accurate in a 300 round. I'm going to tell you this, the round is brutal, it does not lie, it's unapologetic, it's going to expose you for what type of archer you are. All right. You can't blame your equipment, you can't blame this because it's really about you. And that's why it's a great training tool. Um, my first time I shot, most people when they first shoot, you score about a 180. So right now, that's when I started a couple years ago, and I've only shoot indoors over the winter. My average now, I'm just in the 240s. Last year I was in the mid 230s, this year I'm up in about 240s. All right, and that's where you're at, but it is cruel. If you let it get to you, it will crush you. But it'll also make you a better archer because that consistency that you have to have round after round after round, arrow after arrow, the amount of focus that you have to have to compete in one of these is just incredible. And if you can take that over to your other aspects of archery, hunting, 3D, whatever, it's going to make you a better archer. All right, that's how it works. I had a lot of fun filming this. I hope you guys get something from it, and I really do suggest that you go out and enter one of these competitions. One, you're going to see for yourself what target archery is about. Two, you're going to find out if the stereotypes about target archers are true. And three, and most importantly, you're going to find out about yourself. All right? Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time with an all-new episode of Archery 101.